Hey guys, what is up? Ioki here bringing you some more support coaching content. If you guys have never seen this channel before, or you for some reason don't know who I am, my name is Ioki. I am a multi season uh, high elo support player. Obviously, I specialize in the support role, play all champions of all types. And uh, today we are going to be coaching a gold karma player. Uh, so we're looking at like relatively like mid level gameplay, but we're going to be, you know, coaching them up and making sure that they can take their game to the next level. Uh, before we get into the video, just want to make sure that you guys are subscribed to the channel so that you guys don't miss any more top level educational content like this. But this is going to be a top to bottom uh, holistic approach to how to improve your gameplay. I don't know if you actually win or lose this game. Uh, if you win, I'm going to be telling you things that you could have done better to win harder. And if you lose, of course, I'm going to be uh, pointing out the mistakes that you've made along the way and what you could be doing different. And one of those things that you are actually doing quite well is I love to see my coaching clients leave the fountain at zero seconds. The game starts at zero seconds, not at, you know, two minutes. So we're out here. We're being proactive. Solo queue is all about proactivity. I'd be a little careful walking up and getting this ward because this is technically a relatively risky ward. You know, you got to be thinking about the absolute worst case scenario. And the absolute worst case scenario is Nico's in this bush, Rutsu, her entire team's there, right? So because your team is doing some sort of like really lazy five point where this guy is literally just not playing the game level one, uh, your big bad boys are topside and your MF is a little far I love to see the proactivity and I love to see you get this ward, but they could be here, they could be here, and you don't really have a team to bail you out. So just be mindful of it. This is a good ward and I love to see you doing this. Love, love, love. What I really will love to see is if you go back and buy a red trinket, if you get your sweeper here. Oh my gosh, this guy watches Ioki, doesn't he? All right. So, proactivity, looking good so far. Let's talk about matchups, let's talk about runes. Now, in a previous coaching session, I may have recommended, I, I don't remember, I may have recommended that you uh, go Guardian Karma, but as of right now, it is a much more aggressive poke-oriented meta uh, when it comes to Karma. So, Comet is a god-tier rune. If you really, really want to double down on the utility side of Karma, you can go Airy, but I really, really recommend you just go Karma. It is absolutely a lane bully, it does so, so well, and especially in a matchup like this, where I think this is probably going to be like a skill matchup, and just whoever plays it better is going to kill it. It's not like they've got like a blitz crank where if you get hooked one time, you die, so you're a little scared to go for that poke. You can walk up and poke these guys. In fact, I would say that you have the advantage because Nico is quite short range, uh, and you guys have very easy access to poke. So would have liked to see you go Comet, um, but if you really, really like the, you know, like I said, utility side, shielding side of Karma, you can go Airy too. But definitely, definitely go into the uh, the Sorcerer Tree and uh, make sure you pick up Gathering Storm. Uh, we've got Ignite. Ignite against them is quite good, actually. I like the Ignite. Uh, so, okay, so let's talk about level one. We have now realized that we are not leashing. We see our jungler is topside. We are 100% not leashing this game, right? So what you want to do as a Karma MF into this lane is actually walk through lane, sit in this bush, and then Mantra Q them as they come by. Because what that does is, one, you get free damage, right? Two, it lets them know you're here to freaking play. But seriously, it's, it, it's about the damage. Uh, it also puts your Mantra Q on a, on a cooldown, which means that you get to use it a second time sooner than you would otherwise. Um, and it also doesn't make you look for these, like... It can be kind of hard if you don't cheese like this to uh, to actually land the Mantra Q. You have to, like, kind of pivot around minions, and you may not have a good, uh, a good look. Definitely don't stand back here. I don't know if you're typing something, but... Always want to be able to draw, like, a parallel line between your ADC and you. Yeah, don't, don't, bro, you're playing like you've already lost the lane. You are the lane bully in this scenario. You do not want to ever be sitting in this back bush. Sitting in this bush is fine. Ideally, like I said, you sit in this bush with MF and you have a straight line to just mantra queue them as they walk into lane. And that basically wins you the first trade. All right, but you, do you see like how much more difficult it is to like get a mantra queue in if you don't do the cheese bush? Um, obviously, you can only do that if you don't leash. But it looks like we've got, you know, we, we do have options for Mantra Q here. But luckily we land it. But for sure, be thinking about that as Karma. She's one of the absolute best level one cheesers. This is the type of aggression I like to see. There you go. You've got Sweeper, bro. She cannot walk up. There you go, baby. There you go. Love to see the aggression. And, and, look at this. You've already got more HP to uh to trade with her with. So, honestly, I would be down to, like, trade trade auto attacks here. Think about, you You want to think about, like, everything that you have as a resource. Your potions are a resource. 
your health bar is a resource, your mana is a resource, your your minions are a resource. You for sure have the like you have the resource advantage, right? You 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 have the kit that is able to sit in this bush and it's absolutely commandeer it, right? Good stuff, good stuff. I want to see a little bit better um, awareness that you're hitting level two. You know, be counting those minions. Know that the the third uh, melee is going to give you level two. You know, that's just mechanical error that we missed that. No big deal. You knew you knew to go for it. All right, so a little bit of a pop quiz. Let's talk about what massive advantage you have over this bot lane right now. Go ahead and think about it, guys. Take as long as you need. Pause the video if you want to. I'll go ahead and spoil it for you, though. You have Pryo. So we've got a fight. What is 100% going to turn into a fight here? Sedrani sees a free kill, right? They absolutely cannot just disregard these three minions or else they fall behind a lot of XP. They can't just walk walk up here. This is a fight that I would say is 80% going to come into the river. It possibly might go into our jungle. Most likely it goes into their jungle, but it's going to enter the river, right? You can enter the river first. And even if you don't end up getting there first, like the fact that you're threatening it makes Sejuani like not be able to commit as hard as she could, right? So I want to see like... It's just, it's just a little bit of like a map reading thing. So right here, luckily, you've got the better solo liner. He gets a solo kill, right? Right around now, I'd be, I'd be 100% instantly. Said Juani jumped on that. But we're not responding at all. Even if you can't make it to one of these things, you have to respond. You have to respond in the case that you can, right? So let's see how it goes. Yeah, it's entered the river. Now it's gone into their jungle. Looks like we're probably just going to run the Sidwani down. Nice. So this wasn't a scenario that you needed to, but we didn't even move as if it if, if it was a possibility. Like that's the advantage of having Pryo, of, of pushing them in, of playing aggressively, of, of like pretty pretty much perma pushing, is that you have access to the river where they absolutely do not. So just be thinking about that. Luckily, this is not a scenario that you needed it, but I want to teach you these things because there's going to be a lot of games where you do need them. There you go, Mantra Cure face, good stuff. Now, now, like, do you see how, like, much damage you're doing? You'd literally have, like, pushed her out of lane or at least made her pop her potion if you had Comet. You'd have done, like, 200 extra damage. Okay. We're kind of eing ourselves to speed ourselves up only. I would really like for you to be using that E to like extend and win trades Ra rather than just like using it purely for the movement speed. Like having your E right now would be so much more valuable than before. Oh, okay, you do have your E. Or, or is that your guardian? No, that's your guardian. Remember, swap out that guardian. We don't want that. Maybe if you have like a Jinx or something, but even then. The way I look at it is that Karma is such a well-rounded champion is that you kind of, you, you've got points in everything, right? You've got points in offense and defense, utility, poke, shielding, uh, healing if you go into Moonstone, uh, which I sure hope we do this game. Actually, Shirelius would be really, really good this game, but we'll, we'll get to itemization later. Um, but yeah, you really only want to like be doubling down on the utility aspect if you have like a hyper carry. And MF is somewhat of a hyper carry, but like on a scale of hyper carry ADCs, it's like Jinx, Zarya, Philios are 10 right now. And MF is like a strong seven. So I definitely want to be going Guardian for MF. Uh, nor would I really be E-maxing, actually. I'd, I'd probably put like three points into Q and then possibly E-max for this game. But. Okay. Okay. I like the aggression. You you clearly know. Okay. All right, we blew her flash. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, I like that you know that you are in a dominant position this game. Like, we're seeing a couple of, like, mechanical misplays. Like, we're missing cues and stuff like that. But you... That happens to literally everybody. Oh. Camera. All right, so just normal laning, normal laning... Looks like we sent Nico back. Farming up some spell thieves. Now, 
they do have a little bit of an advantage here because even though we've blown Nico's flash and you still ha you are still like entirely completely healthy with uh, pots, she did get to buy. So there is a world where they could actually win all ins. So I wouldn't be like actively seeking them out. I would mostly just be playing reactively to seeing like if Nico tries to force an all in, you know, then you go from there. But I wouldn't be like looking for like big aggressive plays right now. Okay, our mantra's down. What is this Nico doing? This this has to be a kill. Okay, so let's 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 look at let's look at this. Um, there's a world where she's baiting for Sejuani, but Sejuani is already down, and I imagine that she's topside. Yes, she is topside. So this is not bait. It'd be really weird and like forced if Sejuani was actually pathing bot side right now. Okay, we got the root. Auto, auto. Okay, so okay, so right here is a fundamental, shows a fundamental lack of what is going on in the lane. You need to be absolutely one pathing forward. So let's watch this again. It's good that you tether. Walk this way. Walk this way, because this what this does, you know this character is squishy down a pot and has no flash. If you walk this way, she... The only way she could possibly break the tether is walking this way. So you want to do everything in your power to, like, not let her get to the safety of her turret. Because people are always, like, just, you know, subconsciously going to path in the click in the direction of, like, the safest, um, you know, area. And that's almost always going to be your turret, right? So why are you pathing? Why, why are you walking backwards as if you don't have complete 100% confidence that you're going to get this kill? Like, like, look, like, it's not even close. Like, if you path forward and you're tagging in autos this entire time, MF wouldn't feel pressured to, to flash here. So it's good that we reactively, you know, took advantage of the fact that Nico just suicided, right? But could have played it much, much better. And you could have played it. Okay, okay, you need, you need to help her push this wave, by the way. You need to get this wave to crash. You can't back here. There you go. There you go. Just, yeah, just Mantra Q the wave. Get it in as soon as possible. Good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah, now, once it's down to, like, three minions and, like, you hitting the minions at all would just mean that MF is not, like, has a harder time to last at him, then you can get your, uh, then you can get your back off. All right, so what I want to see here is I want to see you path mid. <gasps> it's like they're listening, guys. It's like they watch the stream. All right, excellent, excellent. So we are pathing mid. And this is actually such a good freaking time to path mid too, because one, your wave is going to be completely fine. And two, uh, this is, I'm pretty sure she's going to get ganked. I'm pretty sure this is like such a god tier timer for um, a counter gank because Oriana is for some reason hardcore hugging this wall in a really, really unnatural manner, which means that unless she's just like playing really poorly, I'm pretty sure Sejuani's in the area. Okay, it's not Sejuani, it's Nico, but we're here for it. Oh, okay. Okay, we could have played this much better. Let's go. Let's go over this. So first of all, you use your E on yourself. Once again, we're we're relying too much on the E to um as as pure movement speed. Like using it once back here is fine to like you know save yourself a second or two on the way to lane. But now we don't... Look, our shield's on cooldown. Oh, you can't see that because my my webcam. Our shield is on cooldown because we literally just used it right here. Um, also, a big, give, giving her a big mantra E right here would do wonders in getting her out. I think you actually might have saved her. If we got an early mantra E path this way, or even she could have path this way straight to turret. But we used our E to get there sooner. Kind of hurts. And then we used mantra Q... Which is kind of a weird decision. Considering we don't have any kill pressure at all. And this character can't be slowed. So, you know, Mantra E, a little bit of a decision-making error there. But but I want you to absolutely... In my coaching sessions, I always want to point out what you're doing right. And the pathing mid there was so, so good. It was just a little bit of the execution here. Okay. Uh... We're walking up. This is really risky, by the way. I guess it's not the riskiest thing in the world. You've got your mantra up in t mm, 25. We're just kind of wasting our time. This is not This is not bad. There is for sure a world where you get CC chain there and die, though. You, 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 so, um, 
when I was playing competitive uh, on a team, we had our coach teach us the idea of playing as if you were invincible. And there, as support, there's a lot of times when you literally can just play as if you're invincible. Like, for instance, if you support face check uh, the dragon and it's the, the jungler is solo soloing the dragon, right? Using all of his abilities, everything, he has to just keep hitting the dragon. His health bar is going down and down and down. At that point, unless you're getting collapsed on by other members of the team, you can literally just play as if you're invincible, right? They can't turn and kill you, usually, at, at the early stages of the game. They can't stop using abilities on the dragon, and they can't just run. You can literally just walk up to them, auto them, use everything on them, and they can't do anything about it. But part of part of the concept of playing as if you're invincible is knowing when you can play as if you're invincible, and you can't really do that right here. Maybe if you had Hecarim, like you know, giving you body language that he was backing you up, but Hecarim clearly wants to reset. So I would just be, you know, walk walk into lane here, not losing. Half my health bar for free. Alright, we're hovering bot. Uh, you need to be bot right now. We know Sidwani's on the bot side of the map. And MF is having a hard time getting this wave to crash. Uh, we've we've got vision in the river. So I don't think that Akali's necessarily at risk of dying. Especially if she has the mental capacity to remember that Sidwani is on the bot side. So I would for sure be bot and not mid right now. Yeah, it looks like we have to blow our flash. I mean, we're pretty much just like inviting this 2v3 though, right? Because like we knew all these characters were here. So luckily we, it looks like it's going to be a... Okay, once again, bro, you're using your E on yourself. You've got... That is the worst habit I've seen you have so far. You've got to stop using E as if it's like a movement speed ability only. Okay, so once again, this is solo, fiesta, solo Q Fiesta. Luckily, somehow MF was able to path into their jungle this is never going to happen I, I it's a miracle that your adc came although that that is a that is a good you know visual representation of what i was talking about earlier as in prio but usually it's not the adcs that are rotating like this but yeah you should you should have just been bot making sure the wave crashes anyways you guys ended up winning this but i don't i don't want you to take from that 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 was like a super super good like decision that you made there and then your ADC gets soloed. Interesting. Oh. Sejuani is just your rival, isn't she? Okay, really, really bad ignite, by the way. We do not want to use our ignite like that. Now, once again, it paid off and it maybe even saved you. But I promise you that this is not this is not a scenario where you just like ignite when she's at 90% of her health. Yeah, that's just Sejuani like misplaying. But nice, nice, nice. Alright, uh, so instead of dropping a ward here when you when you with your own eyes can see the dragon uh i would for sure be dropping wards behind the pit like remember the level one where i was like yo it's really risky to put that ward there it's not risky anymore like you've got a collie here your, your collie has prio uh your adc is working on getting it for sure getting more information about behind the pit is so much more valuable than this i, I this was a wasted ward Okay, Hecarim is very, more than capable of soloing, so we're coming over to support your Akali. Okay, they're down Orianna ult. This is actually like a really good moment to aggress. For sure be rooting the uh, Orianna here, though. It's good that you're pulling off the dragon. It's good that you know that your job is not is not to DPS the dragon. Hecarim's job is to DPS the dragon. Your job is to make sure that, that it is safe for him to DPS the dragon and to assist your other allies and to zone and to fight in these bottlenecks. This is really, really good movement from you, bro. I, I see a lot of really good fundamentals coming from you. If we can just smooth out some of those rough edges and make sure that you know when what you're doing is good, why it's good, uh, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna make you into a beast of a player. But make sure we we W the Oriana here. See, since we didn't tether the Oriana, she gets away with like 10 HP. Whereas, like, tethering the, the Sejuani really does nothing here. Sejuani is literally exactly where she wants to be in this fight, right? She's frontlining. She's on top of them. She's in melee range. This root does nothing. But if you just walk at the Orianna, if you play like you're invincible, 
because you pretty much are in that scenario, get a much higher priority target. All right, so we blew Nico's flash again. MF is having a rough time down here, but we trade a one for one. All right, also, 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 why do we need this? Why do we need this tri warded, bro? Look where you're at. Look where you're at. These are so. If you ever find yourself in a scenario where you can just freely ward their jungle, this this is so much more valuable to know if they're on Krugs or Red or even get this deep ward. This, this, this is the ward that you get when you can't get any other ward. This is like the last, this is the last uh, uh, worst case scenario ward, right? Like if you see someone on this ward, it doesn't even always save you. So for sure be uh, warding deeper when you get the chance. Okay, this is going to be nitpicky, and you probably on stream don't see me do this a lot, but you should give the solo plate to Hecarim here. It's literally one tap away from getting it, and I understand that, you know, you're playing Spell Thieves, you want to get your Spell Thieves, but putting 160 gold on Hecarim is more valuable than putting 80 gold on you. I promise you that. Um, but usually when I'm on stream, I don't do that just because I'm playing a little more selfishly, but when I'm playing on my high elo account and... If I can give a solo play to a, you know, 1v9 jungler or a, an ADC player, for sure do it. So step back, let him get the solo play, then come forward and uh, help him get the second one and get your spell, spell thieves. Alright, push it in this way. We should have taken the reset here. But it's fine that we stay in lane. Make sure MF doesn't die anymore. Also, here's another reason why, like, dropping the Tri Ward. This is, like, literally the most common place for people to sweep or um, put a Control Ward. Whereas, like, let's say Sedwani's pathing this way. And she knows that this is swept. She might not have, like, the knowledge to sweep this. So then, it's like, you can play safely and waste so much of her time because she doesn't realize. She, so she's like, this is swept. There's no way they know I'm here. But little do, does she know, you detected her way back here. Deep jungle wards are so god tier. Especially in a game that you're winning like this. Rule of thumb. Let me give you some rule of thumbs. Rules of thumb for Karma is Mantra Q in lane 90% of the time. And then Mantra E outside of lane, like when you're ganking or team fighting or stuff like that, uh, way better. Uh, especially when you get to like 4v5, 5v5 team fights. I don't know if you'll ever be team fighting. You have a Trenomir. But 5v5 team fights, Mantra E is a million times the value. And it's always so tempting to Mantra Q because you're like, oh, I can slow him, I can damage him here. But giving people the speed up, you know, if you're building a Shirelles or Moonstone, proccing that, giving them a big juicy Mantra Shield, so much more valuable. But back to what I was talking about. Rule of thumb, if you're in a game like this where you are 6,000, 6,500 gold up at 11 and a half minutes, uh, you're warding the enemy jungle. So if you're ahead, you ward enemy jungle because you've had like three instances where you've been in here and we haven't dropped the ward. Uh, if it's an even game, you want to be contesting vision in the river because obviously like walking into here when it's a much closer game is pretty much impossible. So you want to be like buying a lot of pinks and contesting these areas, dragon, this, this sometimes. Uh, and then if you're behind, you're probably going to start losing your tier one turret. So you want to be warding your own jungle and warding, you know, trying to protect the few resources you guys have left access to such as your camps so if you're ahead ward enemy jungle if it's a close game ward river if you're behind you're going to be warding your own jungle yeah mantra q mantra q baby all about that imagine if you had comment All right, so we're pretty much just 2v2 being this is, this is for sure winning for you the only way you lose this is if like nico gets like a double root into a double alt really good we're in a good spot here skirmishing top it's going well four to 16 good god you guys are slaughtering them okay so remember it, it was about a minute ago that i said we should have taken a reset it's fine that we're here it's not ideal it's not optimal optimally you are up here helping him uh take this rift herald sitting in a bush because remember it's not actually our job to uh you know dps the rift herald but anyways let's see how this goes down mr mantra q it happens looks like after this wave they go for an all-in
Oh my god, that's just barely not hitting them. I mean, I don't know why they're all landing. You guys are like, actually, so far ahead of them. Got Sejuani down here. We see her. You did what you could for her there. I, I, I didn't see anything incorrect here. We're staying for the wave. Okay, she can't dive us. She can't dive us, right? Mid, mid has no prio. Very, very unlikely that uh, Orianna's here. Yeah, we just kill her. Nice. Good job recognizing that. So much of solo queue is just capitalizing on other people's mistakes, so... All right, we going deeps. We going deeps. So Rift Herald is gonna crash. Okay, okay, okay. So in scenarios like this, your Hecarim doesn't need help. So your options are to get some wards like here, 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 deep wards, maybe on Krugs too, or go down to the Akali, right? So that's what we're doing. Deep ward, and we're going to Akali. Yes, sir. Hey, baby, it's a little bit of a support gap. All right, so we went for Imperial Mandate. I would say that of the Enchanter um, Mythics right now, Imperial Mandate is the weakest. Especially, and it's weird that you're going Imperial Mandate because it's like you already have Guardian. So I thought that you were like going Emacs, Guardian, Karma. But now we're going for like Poke. Anyways, uh, here's rule of thumb for how I choose my Mythic on Karma. Uh, if you've got a heavy frontline that is not going to get one shot, or can't get one shot. Moonstone is usually really, really good. Um, in this scenario, I would have gone Shirelia's for two reasons. One, MF, scooting her along, making her faster uh, is always a good idea. And two, your jungler Hecarim scales with, with speed, with his movement speed. So by giving him mo more movement speed by popping Shirelia's and you know using the passive, you're literally like giving him more damage because you should be the lowest damage on this team. So don't don't try to like bolster up your damage. Instead, double down on a certain aspect, which in this game probably should have been a utility mythic. So I know it's it, it kind of feels like I'm giving um uh directly uh 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 I can't, I can't remember the word where it means like, I'm, I'm telling you to go one way, then I'm telling you to go another way. Uh, I know I said earlier about like Comet and, and Q maxing in lane, but outside of lane, our, our Q is not nearly as important and our Comet becomes less and less important as time goes on. So as you get to this stage of the game, you shouldn't be doubling down on your damage. You should be doubling down on what makes Karma such a god tier team fighter. This is fine. This, mean, this means nothing. I mean, I mean, Nico, Nico's just running it, bro. I will say, uh, when you're sieging like this, make sure that you get wards here. We are sitting on five wards right now. Make sure you ward over the wall. I think this was your ward, right? Yeah, this is your ward. Good ward. Make sure you cover this entrance as well, or at least, like, have these warded. Because there is a world where, like, you get collapsed on by Sedrani and Yorick and Nico and Oriana at the same time. Like, you guys are really, really far up. So, it's okay to be pushing your advantage like this. Just, like, you, you have to set up for it. Now, luckily, you guys are just stat-checking them. You guys are just, like, so disgustingly far ahead that it doesn't really matter if you guys are positioning or setting up for things correctly. And we go down. Now, I mean, there's a world where we, like, give a bunch of shutdowns. So, you know, just be mindful of the fact that this game is very, very comeback friendly, especially in Season 12 with all these objective shutdowns. Teams are getting thousands of gold for free. You've got champions like Zeri who, you know, you give them a thousand gold and it's a huge freaking deal. Uh, just, just be mindful about it, like... Once you take the turret, it's okay to just leave. I know that wasn't your call necessarily, but I'm not. I'm also not seeing any pings from you telling them like, you know, demonstrating that you're smarter than them. That you're, you know, you know what I mean. We'll edit that out. Don't worry. I, I like the emote. You owned it. You owned it. Okay. Uh, literally walking with no wards at all. I understand that you guys are ahead, but 
you're not ahead. You shouldn't ever think about it as like, oh, I'm on the winning team. So like as the support, I'm super far ahead. You're really just as squishy as this Nico, if not a little more so when you're walking into their side of the jungle. So it, 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 I want you to award aggressively when you can. But we have no vision of anybody except for Yorick. So once again, get back to thinking about the worst case scenario. Always have that running in the back back of your mind. What's the worst case scenario? Worst case scenario is that there's three people here, you know, cheese bushing, right? Luckily, there's only one, and you should be able to make it out of this. But you know, if they had a if, if they had their burst in there, if they had Oriana in there from the get go, you would have died, right? Look how much damage she did to you just there. So, you know, give 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 your jungler. Time to clear his camp. Oh my god, you guys actually lost it. Uh, give your time, ju your jungler time to do his camps before you, you know, kind of rope them into bad fights. You can ward their jungle because they they could they couldn't fight if Hecarim was there from the get go. They they can't win this fight, right? You guys are too far ahead. But because you allowed yourself to get like chunked down and like make Hecarim come into like a fight that was like already halfway over, it's kind of rough, right? And this all stemmed from us face checking when we had no nobody to back us up yet. We were far beyond the line of scrimmage. The kind of the kind of line in, in on the map that you can safely say this is our turf, right? Because in a game like this, when you guys are so far ahead, there's a lot of areas that like the enemy can't pass, right? Like they have no more tier two tier one turrets. They have no tier two turrets. So it's really hard for them to really exist anywhere. Got to make sure people are actually close enough to respond to us when we're going for wards. Okay, we've DC'd, I guess. We back. Also, I like the uh, I like the Kimtech Putrefire. Really, really good item. Uh, Mythic into Kimtech Putrefire plus uh, utility boots. Really, really good on on uh, enchanters this season. Okay, once again, Mantra, bro, you're Mantra queuing too much. You're Mantra queuing too much outside of lane. It ain't about the Mantra queue. It's about the Mantra E. Okay, looks like we get Baron for free. See what we do with it. Trinomir's got bot pushing. We're going to push mid. We're going to respond to this fight over here. Oh, Kali actually lost that. All right, uh, MF is making the same mistake that you are. The difference is that you can make it so that this isn't really a mistake. You could actually stay with this MF. Like, yes, she should be resetting, but either ping her away. This is so suicidal, by the way. Uh, either ping her away or, like, be there to assist her to, like, you know, chaperone her out. Jesus, she is so fed. Not a good play, just a good result. But yeah, I need to see way more pings from you. Pinglish. The best way. It's the only way to talk to your teammates. Alright, so once again, no mantra E. Where's our mantra E, bro? I know I know it's not as like immediately satisfying as hitting that mantra Q or mantra W, but mantra E is just so much more valuable, man. Okay, you guys, you guys are kind of just goomba stomping them. Uh, we're playing for... Oh, whoopsies. So, I mean, you, like, you know what you did wrong here, though, right? Like, we're not, we're not walking with our team. You guys do own their jungle, but, like, these players need to be with you when you do it. So, I mean, like, we're, we're, we're just... We're just not thinking about the worst-case scenario. We should be walking with our Empowered Wave. We should be walking with our Hecarim. Now, if we waited for Hecarim to do this... This then we can walk in. All right, so we're getting soul here. That's about a wrap. Soul soul has like an eighty or ninety percent win rate, no matter what dragon you get. So I'm not sure how much more of this uh, game is actually going to be coachable. We're just catching top wave. This is fine. 
Coming into a fight that's already started. Okay. Okay, so unfortunately our, our, our marks and draw... I mean, this is just going to be like solo queue fiesta until you guys uh, like end the game, right? So this is pretty much uncoachable. So we're just going to kind of go over the uh, fundamentals that we talked about. Definitely consider swapping out to um, Comet. If you're going to be playing a lot of Karma, which I saw you playing a lot of Karma on your OPGG, uh, for sure don't run the room, same room page every single game. Right now, I think you should be swapping between a Airy Comet page be thinking about that level one cheese. There's so many matchups that you can just win the matchup off of or make them blow their pots or make them lose, uh, you know, the first couple trades. Really, really good stuff. Um, okay, okay, so turns out there is something that's coachable. This is not your job. This is not your job. You don't have attack speed. You don't have AD. So, yes, it looks like you get the inhib, but, like, your role as the support is supposed to be like conducive to letting other people do that kind of stuff, right? You're supposed to be empowering Hecarim to be able to take dragons and, you know, empowering, putting putting your lane states in a, in, in a way that empowers Trindamir to split. You're never actually the one that should be taking that inhibitor. Uh, looks like they threw the fact that they had the advantage, but there's for sure games where like you're going to go for that greedy play and then you're going to lose Baron and lose the game off of it. I should really never ever be crossing your mind like, oh, I could I could get inhibitor here. But looks like they throw, even though they had numbers advantage. It, that's gonna be it. We we take Baron, we run it down. Um, we went over a lot of stuff. I'm seeing a lot of fundamental good stuff here. What I, what I think is most important with this particular coaching session is making sure that you know why what you're doing, the good things you're doing, like you know why they're good. Um, but for sure, I would not be building Imperial Mandate. I don't think anybody's going that right now. Uh, be, for sure, swap that out for Moonstone or, uh, Shirelius. Shirelius in this game in, in particular. Um, and yeah, just all the, you know, moment-to-moment -moment fundamental stuff that we covered. Uh, GQBD, if you have any questions at all, you know where to find me. You could DM me on Discord, Twitter, Twitch, whatever. Uh, to everybody else that watched this on YouTube, thank you guys so much for, uh, watching i hope you guys learned something and if you have any questions about at all about the session put them down in the comments and uh we will get to them so gqpd pretty good game man you went seven four and 22 a lot of stuff that we can work on a lot of goofy mistakes but once we rough out those smooth edges i'm seeing a lot of really good stuff out of you so uh just it's just a matter of applying those fundamentals and doing it consistently right that's all that climbing the ladder is you clearly know what you're doing uh you're making a few silly mistakes here and there but it's good stuff man uh, but yeah, that's going to conclude the coaching session. Hope you guys enjoyed. Take it easy, boys. Peace. Uh.